Hello, hello to the amazing people, the Neymar here, and welcome to another episode of Limbus Company. I am doing the Yield My Flesh to Claim Their Bones event. You can find the full playlist in the comment description below the video. Watch it from the start, find out what this game is all about, and if you're already up to that, then date. Then welcome, welcome, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we continue the story here. It's a wonderful tactical strategy game from... A project moon and yeah that's about it orders come from the higher ups of limbus company that we are to retrieve a distortion related artifact from this young yin young yin building i'm not sure how this is related to retrieve the golden boss but i'm starting to feel that none of us really have much say in the matter anyway it seemed to me that virgilius already knew where we were headed what was the point of not telling us and letting us go through a roundabout route yeah it's like a really really good question so anyway we click here, we click here, then we choose who goes to the mission. This is like the tactical strategy point of the game where you choose who you take. And then the fights themselves like a little bit simpler than in their last game. But unless you're fighting a distortion where things can get a little bit, well, difficult. Something, and there's also a lot of story in between, but uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I would really recommend this game. You can try it out for free. It's pretty nice. Something continued to nag at the back of my mind during the frequent stops and combat encounters. There was this one thing I just could not understand. This is pretty much expected from Vigilius at this point, but uh, if he already knew where we were going and why would it hurt to tell us for once? So we are Dante, so this is like the uh, like the book, the, the Nine Circles of Hell or whatever it's called, Dante's Inferno. And... Uh, yeah, and our guys is Virgilius in this game as well. So this game really leans onto different like uh, books and stories and entangles them all together in this totally new story. It's quite interesting. But yeah, our guy didn't tell us where we are going before we received the letter from our bosses. I muttered to myself while looking towards the back of the bus where Ang Du slept. She was still out cold. Ang Du is the a blade lineage samurai that we found and rescued from Kurukomo clan. Come on fast, I legitimately think that this is something we have to talk about. Can you please relay my question to Virgilius? Hmm. Ha, huh, if you won't do it, then I will. A journey can't always be sunshine and rainbows. Some friction is necessary. You there, guide! That's a really bad idea. Uh, he's much more powerful than us and a little bit grumpy when we are like, yeah. And we are nervous. Otis relayed my question, then began to share some of her own grievances with Virgilius. A lot of her own grievances. Ha, ah, are you finished? Well, you're not wrong. I did hear most of the details through the radio. And here's why I didn't tell you in advance. It's because you're the kind of people who never learn until the problem crashes through your front door. Would you have done anything differently if you knew in advance? It'll only serve to give you an excuse to whine about it. So, there it is. But now, manager, will you refuse this mission? How could it? How could I? They're already treating us like dirt. If I refuse this, I can't imagine how much worse it will get. I'm sure you're thinking, how could I? And you'd be right. <laughs> I can tell. So, uh, we just like go tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and only a certain amount of people can understand what we speak. Our guide is not one of them, funnily enough. So, yeah, our, our seniors may need to relay the conversation when necessary but he guessed what we said so it doesn't matter i can tell from the way he's looking at me that he already knew what i was gonna say i'm starting to wonder if he really can't hear me ah our guest is awake you should go and ask her for directions manager sean's intuition can only take us so far again this would have gone much smoother if we had been told where we were going from the start but like always Virgilius felt the need to add comments like that before shutting me down and turning away he'd already closed his eyes um, I'll need to explicate our present circumstances to her. Yisang got up to an awkward smile in an attempt to clear the air. After some time, so yeah, I guess we told her all the new details. Yisang seemed to have successfully explained our circumstances to Ang Du. She was standing next to Charon, trying to give her proper directions. She has also told us that as long as we assisted her with her mission, she wouldn't mind us taking the Black Stell for ourselves. What's Black Stell? Ah, turn to the right there, ah. They've already set up camp there. People dressed in Kurokomo clan's garbs were standing around the building, standing guard before its entrance. I have to... Ah, Mentor Bamboo hated Kim. 
Delaying further will only allow the distortion to grow more powerful. We must enter the building as soon as possible. Ang Du had already leaped out of the bus and was rushing in with her weapon drawn. We quickly followed suit. Oh, will she join us? Probably not. Let's go! I'd say we are smooth sailing. Yes, yes, indeed we are. So, for uh, this uh, chapter, for this event, I'm using my... Six Kurokomo clan and uh, blade lineage IDs. Uh, although I don't really have to, I can bench them and use other people. Uh, so I started using them because of the bonuses they give to the currency gain that we are getting from this event. But uh, yeah, we don't really need to like fight with them. We can have them as support characters, uh, which give like very very small, almost meaningful bonuses. But it still counts for the currency bonus so that's good however uh, they're good doing well enough so far and i'm happy enough to see some like new faces new new moves and that stuff so it's pretty good and uh well sinclair he is here actually has the move called to claim their bones which is the name of the chapter well the second part of the name of the chapter and I already forgot. I yield my flesh to claim their bones. There we go. It's so hard to remember what it is called. I had to start recording this video three times until I got it out successfully. But yeah, here we are in this amazing universe, going through the story, uh, thinking about what's gonna lie ahead and all that good stuff. I really do wish I had more time to play this game. I also have the R3 still to do. And like, yeah, I keep postponing it. Mm. If I could, I would do like six hours of content every day, but like alas, I can do like two, three at most, so it is what it is. And this game alone could easily be like two, three hours every day uh, with all the content it has. Like, apart from like this uh, uh, story chapter, so this is like an in between story between two chapters and then. The R3, which is like this one kind of a thing, challenge thing, where you can get some very nice rewards. And there's also mirror dungeons you can go into, and also daily stuff you can do. And yeah, <laughs> it's a huge game, and they keep making it bigger and bigger. I wonder, like, once they finish it completely, like, how would somebody who just got to find out about this kind of game, like, how do you even approach it? Like, it's kind of hard to catch up, right? But uh, if you take your time, does it really matter? Probably not, right? Yeah, you just like sit down and play it and not worry about things. Like the main story chapters all always stay unlocked and like you can even even revisit the events that were before. Defeated henchmen. Ah, damn it. Looks like it was the last one of them. Ah, the aroma of blood. Some splattered fresh, some old and growing vicious. Viscous. <laughs> I can already tell that there will be a college collage of different blood splatters waiting for me in there. I'm excited to see this collection for myself. So Ryushu is some of some of a, a blood artist. She prides in making splatters with her sword and making art out of it, as she calls it. This one expressed brutal thoughts with such nonchalance as one muses about their next meal. Yeah, she's like that. Ah, which may be the case. This way is open. We must move with haste. Aangdu did not hesitate for a second before disappearing into the building's entrance. Man, I'm impressed by her energy. Wasn't she knocked out just cold just a few minutes ago? It is sheer willpower that moves her. What other choice does she have when her superior is captured? Ha! Huh. From the name alone, I expected Yongying building to be much taller than just six floors. Building and all. Well, it's still a building, no? It is a common naming convention in the back streets. I looked up toward the rooftop of the building Honglu was looking at. Uh, I guess somebody will tell me in comments what Yin Yong means so we can better understand that reference. And suddenly grew curious. Oh, what time is it right now? Well, you should know. <laughs> Need a mirror? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my head doesn't actually tell time, you know. Oh, really? Okay. It is 2 and 10 in the afternoon. Two in the afternoon. It's not midday, but it's not supposed to be this dark, is it? How is it this gloomy and dark at two in the afternoon? I'm starting to lose my sense of time here. 
seems particularly darker around this area we're in. Well, compared to the smoke war days, it still brights as a sunny day. Hmm, I suppose that's true. The back streets of T-Corp are known to be in perpetual state of murkiness. Their machines ceaselessly discharge heavy plumes of smoke which cloud the skies. That and the constant color drainage keeps the back streets of T-Corp dark and dreary. Of course, I must also inform you that conditions have improved somewhat after the smoke war due to the various ex extenuating prohibitive conditions introduced by the outcome of that war that limits the production of smoke. Before the war... We have no time for idle chatter, come on! We hurry toward Angdu's urgent cries. Ah, there's more blood lineage bastards left. Well, the last took them all out already. They were nothing but meveling minions. The size of their bravado ill matched their immature skills. They foolishly decided to stand their ground instead of retreating upstairs. An electric buzz of sorts played from the radio I had stashed in my clothes. Is someone calling his radio? The sound became much cleaner when I unfolded the antennae from the radio. LCD here, LCD here, can you hear me? Acknowledge, come on. The voice was coming from the other end of the radio was upbeat, to put it mildly, and very chaotic. Oh, okay, I have just to press this button, right? But, well, I'll talk, but it's not like you can hear. <laughs> they actually tick tock. All right, I called you for a reason. I'm just calling to relay a message, so don't bother responding, yeah? Okay, we don't have much time, so let me keep it short. Remember the black style you guys were sent to retrieve, the monolith? I'm picking up a super huge bump in the monolith signal in the area near you. That signal can force people to distort, for your information. Force people to distort? We have to contain it before that seeping signal goes completely out of control, okay? Ah, what the heck is that? Oh my bad, I've got some stuff going on over here too, you know? Anyway, I gotta keep this short, so let me just emphasize that time is of the essence here. Over and out! The call dropped before any of us had even the chance to say anything. She's uh, pretty lively, huh? We don't have time to sit around dumbfounded. Clocket, let's crack on. Yes, let's go. <laughs> um, everyone, I think the elevator's broken. I see that you and your fellows now also have a reason to hurry. I say that we break through their lines and rise through the stairwell. What say you? It, we don't have a choice. Come on, let's go. I put the radio back in my pocket and began running up the stairs. Yeah. Okay, let's fight through the henchmen and go for the distortion. Okay, mentor and fellows. Angdu is cutting enemies down left and right in her desperate search for the mentor, this bamboo hated Kim. I'm pretty sure. Oh, bamboo hated Kim. I think we have an uh, identity of that kind, don't we? I'm pretty sure her wounds are far from healed. I suppose she's just that determined. Or maybe not. It makes me wonder, though, what was bamboo hated Kim like? Okay, already up to 648. Maybe I didn't even need to do mirror dungeons. Well, I do them anyway, so... Let's go. Yeah, uh, oh, man. Phew, seriously, the sterile is the real challenge, isn't it? Not the Kurokomo clan, guys. Well, Gregor smokes, so it must be harder for him. Curious, is it not? Huh? What is it? They've... That they fill the stairwell full of weaklings who clearly don't know what they're doing. Perhaps they weren't trying to stop us from going upstairs. Perhaps they were afraid of retreating upstairs. No, it can't be. Angdu's expression darkened. Maybe she had an inkling of bad omen. Dost you worry for thy mentor? Don Quixote carefully sidled to Angdu's side with a sympathetic expression. How could I not? What kind of person was Mr. Um, Bamboo hated Kim? Angdu appeared conflicted, as though she was having trouble organizing her own thoughts. She shook her head and sighed. He was a steadfast man, protected what needed protecting, killed and what needed killing. He was always one of the Blade lineage's finest, and they say that he was one of the most skilled swordsmen within the lineage. A man of few words who always sought to take good care of those under his wings. Ah, if only he hadn't made that decision. My fellow would not have met such a terrible fate. Oh? Sinclair half opened his mouth, apparently curious about what the decision might have been, but he soon realized that this was probably not the time to pry and quietly close his mouth. Whichever may be the case, I have no choice but to make haste. Then, we have no choice but to make haste with her. Make haste! Let's go. So seems like all the same enemies still, which makes me very 
in ambitious to check their abilities and plan anything really here. <laughs> Just gonna slice and dice them, and that's about it. But distortion's coming, so if not in this video, probably in next one we're gonna have a nice boys fight. But usually boss fights in these chapters are not also very difficult either. But we'll see, we'll see. Us for the R3, which is gonna come after that. Oof. I already did three RR3 uh, clocks and uh, yeah, I have like nine more to go, but some of them are breaks, so. Actually, I don't know, like the places you take break on, like do you also fight a thing there? You probably do, right? Or not? I don't know. Anyhow. We'll see, we'll see. Now that I'm actually playing the game again, I have to search to like play even more though. <laughs> it's very addicting. <laughs> like it's super addicting. I don't have the time though. I know. Okay. You're like, hey, new. Quit complaining. Like, why are you complaining so much? Yeah, I shouldn't be complaining. That's true. I know. Just filling up the silence, I guess. Okay, the fight's going really nice. Four turns again, cleaned up everything. Do we have like any any airy egos here? No, it seems like I didn't even properly equip my people <laughs> with egos. Should definitely do that. I can do it before the boss fight, since we don't really need it right now. And contrary to dungeons, like the stats and health lost and sanity gained and resources collected don't persist between chapters and uh, in these events, story chapters. So, it doesn't really matter. Nothing else matters. Step, step. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So, we are now like. So if on first turn we got two, four, six, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, so this would be sixth turn then. And then after we do this one, it's gonna be turn seven, I think. If I counted correctly. Assuming we get one extra attack each turn, which we should be getting, and we start with six, which we should start with, yeah, seven, nice. Now we have 12, this will be the maximum, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. But also I have a like, feeling that we also just gonna uh, win here anyway, so. Yeah, it's actually one of the easier chapters. I wonder if that's the case because of the team I'm using or if it's just like relatively easy. I don't know, I don't know. It's a good team, it's a good team though. Ang do is cutting, uh, so this is exactly the same thing. So mentor and the fellows too. So we got like a couple of things that are named exactly the same. I'm just gonna go through it, I guess. Oh, okay. Out of ink and falling, no problem. We have like a zillion of lunacy. So okay, there we go. Let's enter. All right. <clears throat> Leaked cube. I actually had a similar problem with another game that I have with this one, Lackage of Time. It was Genshin Impact. I played it quite a bit. That was before I like started putting stuff on my channel though, so you're not gonna find any videos there. Quite a charming game, but um, much worse, like, <laughs> much less generous than this one when it comes to like getting resources to reliably grab identities that's for sure hmm. also pretty enjoyable but i don't know if i could play one game what i would play i have no idea there's so many good ones right now the other stuff i play on the channel is like pretty nice and chill like a couple of auto shooters and a strategy tactical game jagged alliance oof that one's just just beautiful and uh Auto shooters are kind of fun though, but they are auto shooters, so not not much smarter. I guess like I could go for a, like really heavy 
crunchy and tight tactical strategy game. Wonder that what that would be like something like XCOM, but like I played through XCOM, so something similar but new. Jack the Lion's kind of similar, but it's a little bit loosey. It's not as tight, you know. Or just, or maybe we just play a puzzle game. Like I'm actually playing a puzzle game, Mimic Logic. But I was thinking like something through the breach or something like that. Would not mind another playthrough of that. I played through it. But um, yeah. Anyhow, do you have any ideas? Is there any new nice games coming out recently? Um, oh, there was like this caravan like game that I played like a demo of that I really, really enjoyed. Something like that would be nice. I wonder when that thing, thing is coming out. Maybe a city builder. It's been a while since I played a city builder. Yeah, but this game, like, I'll probably keep playing this for like two more years. Like one video every X amount of times. I don't know. Like. And I also play this game whenever like I watch a YouTube video. And I like watching YouTube. Like. Sometimes I watch something gaming related, sometimes I watch something science related, you know, and then you can put this game in a very small box in the top right corner and since uh, there's content in this game that you can just auto complete, but yeah, so usually I do mirror dungeons then so you don't lose up on any of the content. Origin of Sin. Thick, hazy gloom, burning rat. My head spins from the sheer intensity of these aromatic sensations. Why am I seeing the... Catula here, and these sensations are far stronger than what I usually feel from this Pecatula. Because they are distorted. But yeah, like I would do a mirror dungeon in a very small window while watching YouTube. Works pretty well, actually. So, so now we can target things. So now, like, I can choose who goes where to get the best possible result. But these are very easy enemies, so I'm just gonna auto complete them. So yeah, abnormalities, which turned out to be even weaker than the enemies who we just fought for the most part. But this is like... This is just like a preamble to what's going on. We're like, hey, why are there abnormalities here? And like, what this is all about? And uh, I'm sure my people will wonder. I'm gonna get a nice story segment out of it as well. Yeah. But whatever is happening, what's waiting us on the top floor will not be good. I think the Angdus mentor uh, will actually be the thing that we have to fight because he will probably be distorted or something. I don't know what else could happen that would make sense. How many waves of these do we have to fight too? Oh, hello. Pecatula Morositas. So these look, oh, all of these look a little bit bigger, a little bit more dangerous than usual. Okay. I'm gonna use uh, her ego here because she's neutral otherwise. Neutral means about 50-50% chance to win the clash. Oh yeah, if you're first time here, you probably have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's such a game though, and I don't think it makes much sense to explain each video, like the mechanics of the game and stuff like that, so yeah. Hopefully you're not even here anymore. Hopefully you are back at the first video learning the game together with me. But if you are, well... Welcome. Um, try to figure it out. Anyway, we roll some dice, we roll some coins. Uh, if you get a bigger number than the enemies, then we win. Um, if you're powerful, then you win more commonly. If you're less powerful, you win less commonly. Something like that. Also, some characters are more stronger than others. Some hit more easily, some do more damage, some are better at taking damage, and yeah, this is kind of a harsh fight. Much harder than what we had so far, at least in this chapter. It's not as simple as that, though, like... You also have this sanity meter, so if you're doing well, then you're gonna be doing even better. Then, like, a whole bunch of status effects that will also, like, affect how the fight will be going. Like, Slash might not be the best choice here for this fight. I wonder if I can still do this in 10 turns. What turns out? 6? Okay. So, button, the button I'm pressing is, it's putting my people to 
uh, to like clash. So for every enemy attack, the game tries to auto apply one of our attacks to them. Uh, so they don't get unopposed attacks on my team. And then if it's dominating, that means that we have a really good chance of winning the clash favorite. Pretty good. Unopposed means that we're doing a one-sided attack. One-sided attacks usually happen when uh, you have uh, more people than enemy has, like their moves. This might be a little bit tight when it comes to finishing it in 10 turns, but that's okay. If I can do it, I'll just bring my A team. Okay, one down, three more to go. If you can do one per turn, we'll be fine. Okay. I don't think I want to send so many people into this one, though. Neutral, neutral, neutral. Oh, this one's doing a strong attack. Dominating. That sounds good to me. And we kill this one now. Okay. So I think we can kill these two if things go relatively well here. And I'm gonna have two turns to kill the last one, it should be okay. So when enemies get a little bit extra damaged, they get staggered. Okay. okay. That's about right. And then we do extra damage to them. And it seems like we are... Losing this clash here, that's not ideal, but okay, okay, that one's dead, and now it was a little bit closer than so far, but it's still good enough. Bam! Alright. Isn't it nice to see on my team Blade Lineage and Kurukomo fighting on the same side? Did we just fight the Pekatula? Yep. <laughs> yes. Their appearances are rather dissimilar from what we have encountered before. They appear to have grown more acute. They are evolutions of each Pecatula. The kind of Pecatula one transforms into depends on the types of sin that one has embodied in life. So it's no surprise that there may be variations to them. But we've never encountered anything like this like them before. Collecting the golden bows could have expedited the Pecatula growth process. Those bows, they were really something to do with everything, huh? Our drop is starting to look a lot more serious. Right, that reminds me. These Pecatula are each supposed to represent some kind of sin, right? Sin. My thoughts grow distant all of a sudden. No, the sinners grow distant while my thoughts draw near. Their voices grow muffled. The word sin feels oddly familiar, unfamiliar today. It appears that they have lost their sense of self. Their original form is now forgotten to oblivion. Aren't distortions kind of similar to that? Hmm. Some people become distortions and some people become Picatula. Under what the difference is. I think, I think I know. Planted in the hearts of all are seeds with ever present potential to bloom. Executive manager? What does say? Fow talked over us so I couldn't hear. If you would allow me to continue, maintaining the self even maintaining the self even at times of extreme stress could cause one to evolve into distortion and in the light of that day descends upon the hearts of every human, blooming the seeds buried deep within. Manager, if once something something devoured by the scene, they are reborn in the form of the something, the image reflecting the something 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 something, dreamt by those who are noting. So we have like some kind of like, you know, realization right now. Dante, Dante, what is... If one withstands the something 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 something, yet something something of the scenes, the heart something, are we distorting? What the hell? Clock at! What in the bloody hell are you talking about? Ill, I like the sound of that. I ill like the sound of that. Has something gone awry with the prosthetic head? Yet, if one seeks to bear the something, 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 the something, something of the original hearts. Ego, is that what you're speaking of? And if world perceived through their own something, 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 the something shall be unveiled to their egos, melt into by something of sin. Ha, oh, they're starting to talk a bit like my grandfather. Ha, oh, my manager, your head. Executive manager, your head is on fire. Ouch, what a blaze. I think they're about to explode. Only those who can define their own. Oi, we've got to do something before Clockhead bites it. Got any bright ideas, lass? I know not what to do. 
Only those who are awakened to their own something. Ah, it is scorching. I had thought that manager Squire's flaming hat was merely for style, for I had not once felt such heat from it. Faust, what if... What if they accidentally activated the self-destruct sequence? Ah, this heat. If you don't dose it now, it's going to melt everything around them. Yes, the operating principles are the same. Dante is via the golden boss connected to the root of the sapling planted in the subterranean area of the quit quarters, which is to say that... Who gives a shit about boss? We got to douse the flames on their head. Water! Doesn't nine have water? We must make haste and douse the flames. Sometime later. <laughs> Pray tell Ardo recovered. My eyes. If I had eyes, that is open slowly. I was lying on the ground surrounded by sinners. What happened? Do you not recall what had transpired? Ah, uh, I guess I don't. I do remember walking up the stairs and suddenly feeling really dizzy. Executive manager, you must visit a workshop to get that looked at as soon as possible, as soon as we return. Ha, ah, a workshop? Did I malfunction or something? Don't talk about them like you're talking about some machine. Ha, ah, either way, there isn't anything we can do about what just happened. Not here. We can discuss this later once we return. What just transpired does not seem to pose any hindrance to our mission. Angdu, where is... She has advanced without us. While I remain curious yet concerned about your condition, we must reconvene with her. The situation calls for urgency. Yeah, okay. There was a lot I didn't understand, but since we are in the middle of an operation, let's deal with that first. Alright, so yeah, something weird is going on. Surely it's not gonna get worse, right? <laughs> like that would ever happen. Dark Cloud, so we have three more here to do. Okay, grab that. So these are nice bonuses. If you can finish everything in under 10 turns, you get these nice. I have almost 40k lunacy again, and I used quite a lot to do some extractions in the past. Just keeps piling up. Oh, so we can see here like the floors that we went up and then up and then up. And there is this, see this cloaked figure here? And then that. Oh, that's the bamboo hated came. That's so familiar to me, the bamboo hated game. Oh, probably from Library of Ruin. Uh. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> we have enough currency now to grab all the rewards. Um, so I'll do that. Indentity training ticket. Oh, I don't. I just realized, I thought if you get to 750 you can grab everything, but no, these each cost that amount. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a lot of mirror dungeoning then, but okay, what is mandatory and what is not? What is this thing? Oh, these are extraction tickets, okay. I guess I really want this thing, obtain from yield my flesh to claim their bones event, like... What is this? Blade Lineage Salsu. Uh, is this Don Quixote? I mean, by the hair it would be, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I need like, let's see, 750, 1.3k, 1.8k, around 2k, 2.2. Two, three. Around 3k, a little bit more maybe. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, well, from one side, I'm glad. I'm actually glad because I was like, hey, I have way more than I need. Like, what's up with that? But no, 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 it's not, it's not. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna be doing some mirror dungeons. I have 15 more days. Surely I can collect everything I need, right? But anyway, that's gonna be it for this episode. In the next one, we just might get to the boss and see what it is all about. Hope you enjoyed this one, though. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I wish you all to have a wonderful day, do some nice things, be kind to each other, and let's make the world a better place together. Thank you all for watching, and see you next episode of Limbus Company. The Niamh signing out. Bye-bye.